What was a red flag that made you stop talking to a person immediately? Story 1. My coworker told me he knew his wife was having a seizure at work, drove to her job, retail grocery, asked where she was they told him she hadn't shown up, so he knew she was in her car but he decided to shop around a little bit before finding her. By the time he got out to her car, someone else had called an ambulance and was helping her. I haven't been able to look at him the same. Story 2. I told a guy I only had time for a coffee date because I had a study group to attend. He kept trying to extend again and again and eventually asked if I would go watch a movie at his place. I said, uh, no, I have to leave now and he knocked on my car window so I'd roll it down, then refused to let go of the top of the glass. I had to pull away slowly with him still holding on. Study group laughed their asses off when I told them why I was late. He didn't get a second date. Story 3. This guy I'd meet for coffee, for mentoring, I figured out was just a liar. Not even about important stuff, just dumb random things. Was super easy to notice, and was insulting that he'd think I was that gullible. Story 4. Told me that they wanted to drown someone at some point just to watch the life leave their eyes. Not anyone in particular. Just wanted to experience murdering someone, specifically through drowning. I noped out of there as fast as I possible could. Story 5. Had a date with a girl who told me a couple of stories about her life and ended them saying, Nah, I'm just kidding. At the end of the date, I felt like I knew less about her than I did going in. Made me feel really uncomfortable. Story 6, an old buddy I used to work with stopped into bullshit. When he started explaining that he learned you don't need a driver's license because the Gov is a big corporation and we can renounce our spot and declare ourselves freemen, I just gave up on him. It's been around five years now. Story 7. I'm an alcoholic that's pretty jazzed about being sober now. You'd be surprised how many folks will pull out the and you don't think you could just get away with a drink or two after being sober this long? IDK, but I never plan to find out and it's concerning that you feel the need to tempt me. Story 8. In high school, my longtime crush finally started to reciprocate my feelings and we got to hanging out. That's when he told me he and his buddies liked to ride their bikes and swing baseball bats as they chased terrified homeless people down. When he saw my horrified expression, he was like, We don't actually hit them. They just think we will. At worst, we'll throw brown paper bags full of dog shit at them. Ha ha ha. That relationship lasted about half a day. Story 9. Friend of mine told me she was having an affair with a guy who provides intimidation for a criminal organization. Said she didn't know that about him when the affair began. She implied that it wouldn't be safe for her to dump him. After hanging up the phone, I said to myself, stay away from her. Story 10. I had a friend that I grew up with. Played on the same teams. Our parents were friends. We were in each other's weddings. He was in the police academy and came over to the house one night during that time and said, you know, I thought I wanted to be a cop so I could serve and protect. Really help people, you know? Now I realize it's so I can drive really fast carry a gun and beat people up. He also went on a rant about how all homeless people should be rounded up and buried, thrown under the jail and disposed of. We never spoke again after that day. Story 11. He tried to force himself on me by attempting to put his hands down my pants and kiss me. I told him no and he looked at me dead in the eyes and said, people don't refuse me. The best part is that I drove us. Edit. So when we're at the bowling alley for our date, when he did that, he got mad at me and demanded I take him home, and I said okay. The entire time we drove, he didn't say a thing to me. When I got to his place, he just exited the car and kind of slammed the door. He never texted me after that. I was so confused but relieved. Story 12. Met someone for a date. We went on a hike, and I tripped over a log and fell on my hands, and they non-stop pointed and laughed at me hysterically for five minutes straight. Didn't offer to help me up, offer any consolation, just laughed in my face for five minutes. Kept bringing it up the rest of the hike how stupid I looked, falling and laughing again. Story 13. Met a guy at the gym and invited him to hang out with my friends later on that week at the bar. He seems totally normal. Later at the bar, we're talking and he drops an incredibly racist joke out of nowhere. Stops the conversation dead in its tracks. And we all look at him and Noon says anything or laughs. He mumbles something about us being too sensitive and didn't say much the rest of the night. Haven't talked to or seen him since. Story 14. Had a friend who is bipolar. He received a restraining from a girl. He started talking online to a female friend of mine. She told me she was feeling uncomfortable. I told him to leave her alone and he said no. And I couldn't tell him what to do. I pretty much ended the friendship right there. I think he's doing better now but I refuse to be friends with him again. Story 15. Had a friend who is bipolar. He received a restraining from a girl. He started talking online to a female friend of mine. She told me she was feeling uncomfortable. 
I told him to leave her alone and he said no and I couldn't tell him what to do. I pretty much ended the friendship right there. I think he's doing better now, but I refuse to be friends with him again. Story 16. The year I graduated college, my best friend also graduated, but he got a coding job immediately and I had to take a delivery driver job. Well, first time hanging out, he says, you know, it's nice that I get the benefit of free health insurance, but at least you get free sandwiches. This was after he wanted to start making fun of my grandmother for some reason. Such a heel turn for someone who got $1.50K. Story 17. Back when I was about 15 and I was walking my grand's new small rescue dog, saw a group of my friends. I knew, including a slightly older boy I fancied. I walk up and start chatting to the group, talking about our new furry family member and his tragic history. And this lad I liked thought it would be the height of funny in that moment to lunge at the dog. He was nearly six faft already at 17, and the dog was a small poodle. So the size difference from the perspective of that little dog must have been terrifying especially considering the abuse he'd suffered. The poor dog ran behind me shaking like a leaf and the lad was doubled over laughing his ass off. I've never hated someone so quickly and so intensely before or since. I gave him a piece of my mind, which as a teen amounted to me shouting about what a total wanker he was and how I hoped he shriveled and died. I never bothered speaking to him again. He phased out of the friend group soon after and I don't know what happened to him. Fortunately, the dog was fine and over the course of a couple of years really developed his confidence with my gran, until he was fourteen and passed peacefully in his sleep. If by some alignment of the stars you read and remember this, Dave, fuck you. You're a wanker and I still hope you shriveled up. Story 18. Dated a woman who had no job and lived off of rental income from a single property. She told me she wanted to start a new business but had no savings and didn't want to work. This was immediately after she told me she pissed away a 400k inheritance in a few years by traveling. I laughed and told her that was what jobs were for. I'm pretty slow most of the time, but I'm pretty sure she wanted me to be the solution to that problem. Story 19. Joined a new book club because I love reading and thought it'd be a great way to make some new friends. Everything was going great. We had a lively discussion about the book and I thought I fit right in. Until one of the members starts going off on a tangent about how climate change is a hoax and it's all a conspiracy to control us. As someone who's pretty passionate about environmental issues, it was like a record scratch moment for me. Even tried to rope me into a debate by asking if I've ever personally seen the ice caps melting. Decided to just smile, nod, and look for another book club. Story 20. I dated a girl for a short while who quickly started alluding to me being the love of her life. She then, all of a sudden, said she needed to find herself and said we should break up. I told her I had fun, thanked her for her time, and went on my way. Not even two days later, she called me crying, asking, That's it? You're not even going to try to chase me? Did I mean so little to you? I can't believe what a heartless jerk you are. Nope. Got out of there, but not without a plethora of other calls and messages and unfortunate happenings. Story 21. Back in the day, I played softball all over the Midwest. Major hobby, e Kik. Met a guy at some small leagues and we were friendly, contacted each other about playing some tournaments, etc. One day he invites me back up to play with him on a team in Minneapolis for some big all-nighter tourney. He said we'd go up, smoke a couple foilies on Friday and still be wired on Monday. I'd never heard the term. It was meth. He wanted to smoke meth. Story 22. I have an older, 15 years old car that I am emotionally attached to. It is not rusty or dirty. I take great care of it and everything works on it. It looks pretty good for its age, and so far it has never let me down. I can afford a newer one, but I don't care to upgrade it, especially since there is nothing wrong with it. It is a great indicator for first dates. Most people will give a playfully worded comment, but others will be so rude about it. Story 23 I was once seeing this guy, but after a couple of dates I wasn't too sure I could see myself going any further with him, so we gradually started to chat less. I worked in a bar at the time and a couple of weeks after he came into my place of work on an incredibly busy shift and decided to confess that he wanted to move forward into a relationship. I was in the midst of serving customers and waiting on tables and he took it upon himself to try and stop me from doing my job until I told him that I wanted to be with him. Of course, I did not do this. My manager witnessed the whole thing and was highly unimpressed with the whole situation. He brought his two friends who were incredibly rude and sexists to my female co-workers. I had absolutely no time for someone who interfered with my job and associated with people who spoke to women, or anyone for that matter, in such a demeaning way. Story 24. Met a girl online that absolutely love-bombed me after a few weeks of texting. 
A while after it started, she tried to pressure me to cut ties with my family and throw away a great job opportunity. Guilt tripped the fuck out of me. Said I was the worst human ever while somehow also being the sole reason she was still alive. Said I absolutely must move to her city, literally on the other side of the continent, while she could stay at her boyfriend's home. Hadn't known until then that she had a BF. I would have probably ended up as a mutilated corpse in the woods of bumfuck nowhere without my peers knowing about my whereabouts. Thankfully, the whole convo gave me the fucking chills, and I was able to cut the contact immediately. Nowadays, if someone shows me even the slightest bit of affection, it instantly triggers a hardcore fight or flight response. So, thanks for that, I guess. Story 25. I used to live in the country about 30 miles outside of the city. I had a very, very good friend for about 10 years. My GF and I moved into the city and my contact with him became less and less and I gained a new circle of friends that lived in the same apartments as I did. One weekend, I was going to visit my parents, and he found out I would be there and came over to the house. I was happy to see him since it had been a minute. Well, I had taken one of my newer friends with me. I'm a white dude, and my friend I took with me is a black dude. The three of us are standing by my car having a normal conversation, when out of nowhere my old friend says to my new friend, I have never dated any of your kind, but I gotta say your kind sure do make some pretty women. That was the end of that conversation and the last time I spoke to that guy, that was probably 20 years ago. Story 26. Showed up to a girl's house to pick her up for the first date and she was so drunk she could hardly stand up and was slurring her words really bad. Decided to just leave since there was no way I was taking this girl to a restaurant. She begged me to either stay or take her home with me, and I said no thanks. She staggered her way outside, screaming and cussing as I drove away. Got an apology text the next day, but never responded. Story 27. We moved to a new city and met one of our new neighbors. She started out so nice and then found out I was Canadian. The second she heard that it was, oh, you must be so relieved to get away from the socialist health care. It made the conversation come to a full stop. Then I laughed, said no, and walked away. She has since then proven to be absolutely insane. One of our neighbors has a restraining order on her. So I'm glad I didn't go further into being a friendly, chatty neighbor. Story 28. I had a woman I've been friends with for years invite me to her daughter's birthday mid-pandemic, around the time of the first groups approved for vaccination. There were about 60 people invited on the Facebook event page. It was clearly stated no masks and that it would be a great way for everyone to reconnect. I declined with, Thanks for the invite, but I'm not vaccinated yet. I haven't talked to her since. Sorry, dude. That kind of disregard for people doesn't fly with me. Story 29. Dishonesty. If someone lies or deceives me, especially about important matters, it's an immediate red flag. Trust is the foundation of any relationship. And once it's broken, it's hard to rebuild. So, if I catch someone being dishonest, I prefer to end communication rather than risking further deceit. Story 30. When I got my first apartment in my 20s, I invited someone I thought was a friend to come stay with me sometime. Just a vague invite suggestion because I wanted to spend more time with them outside our workspaces. They said they'd only visit if I lived near some kind of anime pop culture convention where they could table and make money. Dropped the friendship like a rock after that. It was a shame, but if you just come out and say that sort of thing to people, I'm not sure what sort of career can be possible for you. Story 31 I was with someone for a couple of months and it all fell apart in a matter of minutes when he sent me a voice note complaining about the fact that I was depressed and had been for too long. At this point, it had been two weeks that I'd fallen into a pit and that my depression was making him feel depressed and that I lied to him about who I was when we met because I wasn't in a depression pit at the time that we met. I noped the fuck out of that situation instantly. Surprisingly, the relief I felt actually helped me feel a bit better. Story 32 was talking a girl I met while working part-time at a movie theater many, many years ago. She was very quiet, and I thought she was very cute. As I started talking to her and getting to know her more, I discovered she was heavily involved with her church. No big deal, I thought. It wasn't until when a certain movie called Superman Returns came out that I saw major red flags when I read a post about the movie on her live journal. She went on a lengthy religious rant talking about how the movie was evil, and it went against Jesus because of one line in the movie talking about how the world needed a savior. Immediately stopped talking to her after I read that. Story 33. I had a co-worker he was or seemed cool, and I genuinely liked him. But one day, a year into getting to know him, he said he would go to people's houses and steal packages. 
and I felt so bothered by this that I immediately did not approach him the rest of that day. The next thing he came up to say was he wanted to sleep with his brother's girlfriend. I have lost all respect for him, and I know I'm not a good person myself, but these two things have really made me upset and feel so much anger towards him. Now I have no kind of desire to talk to him, but I keep it professional and work on projects with him all else aside. I put my own feelings at the door. Story 34 I stopped talking to one of my best friends because he was bitching about me to a former class fellow of mine. He said something along the line of, How did I even get into a relationship? How my GF, now X, deserves someone better, and how I'm a simp. He then proceeded to justify sending creepy-ass texts to my other best friend's girl. He did forgive him for that, but Ig, he shouldn't have. Mind you, he said all this to a class fellow of mine whom he barely knew. 